Welcome to the Weekly Huddle YouTube channel with a Weekly Huddle YouTube channel exclusive. We're going to be talking about our uh, NFL awards now that the NFL season has concluded since all NFL awards are based solely on the season itself, not the postseason. I mm. have with me again, if you've already seen the podcast, Christian Taper. Other way. You can't tell. Yeah, he, he is totally. <laughs> Christian Tabor, who is uh, coming to us from the sun. Okay, I'm back. I'm okay. back on Earth. He's back on Earth now. Uh, so yeah. we're just going to open this up real quick. We're, I'm just going to. It's not that hard to argue this because we know. I mean, there's, there's people have already been talking about this for a while. So I feel like even though we haven't prepared for this at all, we're just kind of doing the spur of the moment. I feel like we can uh, really get our picks going. So let's start yeah. off with Offensive Rookie of the Year. Who was the young gun on offense that really blew you away this year? I think that the choice that, I mean, for me is pretty obvious is Justin Jefferson. I mean, he came in, he's breaking rookie records for his team. He's so far one of the best, if not the best, you can make the argument, um, wide receiver of the draft so far. Obviously, we don't know. Only time will tell in that case. But I think it would be... It's either him or Justin Herbert in my, in my eyes. And even though I think Justin Herbert is also having a fantastic season, breaking records on his team as well, um, I'd give the slight edge to Justin Jefferson. That's just me, though. It's I, super close. I'm going to gonna take the other guy you said, Justin Herbert. I'm going to run with him as my mm -hmm. offensive MVP or offensive rookie of the year. He, speaking of breaking records, he broke the uh, rookie touchdown record. He broke the rookie mm -hmm. record, or he's second in the rookie record for yards. He, uh, mm -hmm. I think he's second in pass or he's first in either passer rating or passing completion percentage, and he's second in the other one, one of the other ones. Right. So, I mean, I feel like he just, he's going to be a bright star. I, I get why Jefferson, but I just want to throw someone's mm. name in the ring that we don't hear much about this for this award. He's not going to win it because of Jefferson and Herbert, obviously, but right. if, you were making up, if you were making up finalists for this, it'd be Jefferson, it'd be Herbert. I think the one person you have to mention, maybe it's just as a finalist, is James Robinson. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. He broke the thousand yard mark, undrafted rookie out of the from the Jaguars. The Jaguars, the one in fifteen Jaguars, an undrafted <laughs> rookie running back, was like is like I think third in the league in rushing, fourth in the league, something like that. So I mean, if that's not impressive, I don't know what else is. It's, he's not going to win it because you know the two record breakers, obviously. But I think his name deserves to be in the hat. I'm going to be honest going into this. Um, I heard, un, you know, he was an undrafted rookie. Did not know he was a rookie this year. I, I legitimately did not know. I thought he was like a second or third year. Really? And even even watching him, I he, can, he convinced me that he was a second or third year. He doesn't seem like a rookie to me. So switching over to the defensive side of the ball now, defensive rookie of the year, who do you have? It's pretty obvious. Um who is the front front runner? Obviously. Yeah, um, I have uh, the what should be the Washington Football Team's mascot since they don't have one. Uh, I have Chase Young being the defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, I mean, I think he has like seven and a half sacks, eleven quarterback hit. He's he's done really well. He's coming for Tom. He's coming for Tom's old mm -hmm. ass. He's coming for Tom. So he's about to show. Pause. 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 <laughs> Time out. Whoa. Only Tom's kids can do that. <laughs> you didn't just say that. <laughs> you didn't just say that. Anyway, yeah, anyway, Chase Young wins. Yay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just to just to maybe provide a different uh, a different you know talking point than what some people say because Chase Young is obviously the front runner. I want to mm. throw Cam Dantzler's name out there just because he's done very well this year as a he's a corner on the Minnesota Vikings. He had yeah. he was she at the beginning of the year he was shutting down. Some of the top receivers in the league, people were noticing. He's, a, I think, he's a fourth-round pick. Mm -hmm. and he had a, I think he was uh, up there in picks. I think he had like four or five come around like halfway through the season. So he was up there in picks, but then he ended up, you know, getting hurt a little bit. Came back, still played very well. Had an amazing pick against uh, the Lions in the end zone on mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, or uh, the week after Thanksgiving, something around there. Uh, but it was very good, and I, I just, yeah, I think he deserves some recognition. I know Chase Young's going to win the award, but he should definitely be, like I said, a finalist. I, th I think someone else that, um, I don't know if he'd, um, obviously he won't win the award. I don't even know if he'd be a finalist, but someone that I really liked this year who was a rookie was Jeremy Chin of the Carolina Panthers. I thought he had a great year. People are only going to see the two-touchdown thing and be like, well, you didn't do anything else all year or whatever. 
but if you look, he was one of the bright spots of a Carolina team that was, I think, for the most part, underwhelming. Um, he he was he was a bright spot of that defense. He was one of the leaders of that defense. He is someone that I enjoyed watching, and I, he's someone that I'm going to continue to enjoy watching. Hopefully, he's a Carolina Panther for a long time. Hopefully, he can help guide them to success. Yeah, um, Carolina underwhelming, but they were better than what the record suggested. With Christian McCaffrey mm. being out for a majority of the year, they went five and eleven. Only two of those losses were by one score or less. Or by one score or more, by one by one score or more, like like wow. seven or more. They were within every. They were all but two games. They were within winning. And you know, uh, if you if you watched uh, the Week Seventeen game with with two quarterbacks that can't throw, you you'd be surprised. I know you you think that's impossible. All right. I was very disappointed about that. Yeah. I was I was sad. PJ was... Tucker, he let me down. You keep calling him PJ Tucker. I keep calling him PJ Tucker. God damn it. Maybe you should go play Keep for the Rockets. Going. They'll probably be better than what they're actually doing right now. Why are they two and four? I hate life. My Nuggets suck too. Don't worry. They're they're doing terrible as well. Fair. Um, yeah. So next we're gonna do we're gonna do executive of the year. I think when you're looking at it, it's gotta be Bill O'Brien. He he built that Arizona Cardinals franchise. He built that Miami Dolphins franchise. He got a top three pick because of him. He is the best executive I've ever seen for other teams. Yeah. But uh, in, all I mean... in all seriousness, I think <laughs> I was making a joke. <laughs> Bill O'Brien, the man who was fired, was executive of the year. He is. He's the executive of the year for the Arizona Cardinals and Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm God again. So do you want the softball or do you want to try to fish for someone who is better than Brandon Bean? Because Brandon Bean is my obviously my executive of the year. Yeah, Brandon Bean has to be the pick. Like, right. I don't see how he's not. But if you had to, th- if you had to think of someone else, because Brandon Bean put together this team and it just made a bunch of signings like Mario Addison and trading for Stephon Diggs and just making all these moves to set the team up the way they are. But if you were to, if I was a force to pick someone other than him, who would you go with? Oh God. Um. Let me think, because I have to think of who did a good job this offseason gathering pieces. The, the first thing I think of is what playoff teams did a good good, a good job, because usually argue, it goes to teams with good records. I think you could argue the Bucks GM. He got Tom Brady down there. He, he swung a deal for Gronk. He got AB in there. He signed all these old aging veterans, and they made the playoffs for the first time forever. Uh, the, the the Browns GM, you know, he built the team they built over the past year when they from Ken Dorsey gave it to them. They're now in the playoffs. I think I think that could be a and them of course making the playoffs after not making it for but you know like, it's not it's not as sad as the Bills but it's pretty sad. I feel like I feel um, like that achievement would go more towards a head coach though, which we'll get to. That's fair. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, I think I don't I don't, I don't think anyone other than Brandon Bean wins it this year. Yeah, agreed. Uh, now going to coach of the year, who do you have for coach of the year? There's a few different candidates you could take. You know, I I wanted I wanted. Uh, the Dolphins head coach to win it. If they would have made the playoffs, I would have, uh, I would have thought he would have won it. To be honest, but now that they didn't make the playoffs, I think that kind of hurts them a little bit. Um, I think since we have Brendan Bean winning executive, I don't want to double dip in Bills and say Sean McDermott, totally even though that would it. be my pick. Totally yeah, that w- that that would be my pick. I'm not gonna pick but him I, either. I would. I don't want to like. Yeah. I don't Double want to, dip. I don't want to repeat it, but totally deserves it. Let's get that out of the way. Totally deserves it, but neither of us are going to pick him just because we don't want to double down on Brandon Bean. Yeah. Um, other than other than Sean McDermott, who do you think would earn it? I think I'm looking for coaches that you could make a case for. I think um, looking at their record, even though you know people are going to say what they're going to say, and the media is going to say what they're going to say, and people are going to hate on them because you know TikTok. But I think you can make a case for for Mike Tomlin. I think you can make a case. Yeah, you can do him. You can do Kevin Stefanski from the Browns. You can do mm-hmm. Andy Reid. They went fourteen to two, best mm-hmm. record for best record for any uh, Super Bowl defending team. I think it's away record or just overall record. Um, I would be happy for Andy Reid in that case, you know, because yeah. who who won it? Who won it? Did, he didn't win it last year, did he? No. His Super Bowl year. Did he? I think he did. Or is did it the he? hammer of Kyle Shanahan? 
Maybe it was Kyle Shanahan. It might have been, but if if he did win it last year, then it would be back to back, and that would that would be happy for him in that case. So but, are you are you, uh, you're just throwing out some names here? Yeah, I mean, I want Bean. I can see any of those other names. Um, this one is or not Bean. I'm dumb. Uh, McDermott. Uh, I just see them as one person. <laughs> they are they are one in the same. Um, you know, any of those names I could really. I don't think this is like necessarily as cut and dry as executive. I could I could see multiple coaches being picked for coach of the year. My biggest defense is going to be Brian Flores. I think he deserves it. I think the Dolphins are way ahead of schedule with the rebuild process and after. Oh yeah. After making decisions with Tua, because you know the last game, I don't think he should overact too hard. I think mm -hmm. with the, having the third overall pick and the 34th overall pick, they have, I think they have three picks or like four picks in the first 70. They're going to yeah. be able to build this team to, I'm scared for the division next year, but we'll mm -hmm. get to that when it comes around. I think you give Brian Flores the, the coach of the year just for what he's been able to do to the team. Even though they didn't make the playoffs, I think he has done the most for the team and they're just the most, they're not the best or most talented. They're just the most well coached and that's why they're doing so well this year. Right, like in my opinion, is is the lack of playoff berth going to hinder his chances? Probably. In my opinion, yes. Yeah. But does he still deserve it nonetheless? Yes. Yeah, that's why I think McDermott's gonna win it. I Cause I know that I know the AP doesn't give a fuck if they double dip on executive and coach. Right. But I know I do, and I would I would if it was under my opinion, if it's in my opinion, I would give it to Flores. Right. Yeah. So now we got two left. First, we're gonna mm. go with defensive player of the year. Um, I, I know for, I think there are, there are maybe a couple ways you can go with this. I, in my personal opinion, I'm going to go with TJ Watt. I think TJ Watt is having a fantastic season. I know maybe he doesn't have as many pressures as someone like Aaron Donald. He may not be as dominant as someone like Aaron Donald. He might not. Um, but either way, I think that his season, the season that he put together this year, um, it's either him or Xavier Howard in my opinion like those are the two front rudders that i'm seeing and i think the way that tj watt was able to shape the team around him was more than what xavian howard did for the dolphins if that makes sense yeah i get it i mean that but that defense is always going to be amazing even without tj even if you remove tj watt i think that defense is still phenomenal Right, which if, if you did the same with the with the Dolphins, I don't know if you could say the same. Right. But they do still have Bright, uh, Byron Jones, so I mean, it's not like they're mm -hmm. lacking, but Xavier Howard, yeah, with that is definitely a big part of it. I'm going to go with the man you mentioned but didn't give a, a, a defense for, which is Aaron Donald. Like mm -hmm. I said in the podcast, he has the most pressures in the league, and the distance between him and TJ Watt, who's number two, is the same between TJ Watt and number 17 on the list. So mm -hmm. he's a monster. He's a beast and he gets double and triple team the most of any player and beats them consistently he is currently running the number one overall defense in the league and is just he's the best defensive player of this generation one of my favorite players of all time hands down he's just it's there's nothing you can there's, it's, he's phenomenal you can't are, mm -hmm. is he leading the league in sacks right now i'm pretty sure he leads the league in sacks if i'm not mistaken i don't know but we're gonna edit Google, it out if i'm help. wrong but if not it's just staying in <laughs> Who leads the NFL in sacks? TJ Watt is number one, 15. Aaron Donald is 13.5 and is tied with uh, Trey Hendrickson with 13.5. Hassan Reddick has 12.5. Well, wow. I still think even though TJ Watt has the numbers, all right, so we're we're gonna leave it in anyway. But TJ Watt is the leader in sacks <laughs> over Aaron Donald. I still think that Aaron Donald is more crucial to his defense and is even though he didn't have the best season like okay this is the same argument for giving Mahomes the off the MVP because he's the best we all know he's the best player but he just hasn't had the best season Aaron Donald not only has he had a top season in the league I don't if you want to give it to Xavier Howard you can because it's even he's having a better season this year than Gilmore had last year right but if you if you give to him I would be mad but I still will go down swinging for Donald 